mentioned about the benefits of the patients. There's also um, an ability now for us, if there's a patient, for example, that um, for various reasons needs to go to Houston because they have a very unique form of cancer or a complex treatment or surgery that needs to happen, um, we kind of have a front door entryway into Houston where their actual oncologist and primary care physicians here maintain that relationship with the physician. So it becomes collegial in nature, albeit the care happens in Houston, but there's that interconnectivity that does not go away. And at the same time, um, there's an ability to partner in that if it's a surgery, for example, the patient go to Houston, have surgery, and then have their follow-up care if they need chemotherapy or radiation therapy here um, close to home uh, um, in their community. So it's a great relationship. It's a great resource um, that we have for us. These are a couple of the programs that we're really focusing on right now. Um, lung, breast, and colorectal. At the end of the day, this is where there is a lot of need. There's a lot of volume in these three specific disease sites. We're starting programs in um, gynonc, skin uh, as well. But these are the ones where we have um, advanced the most. Right now, we've got a really interesting um, lung screen program. Now, you'll see a lot about lung screen out in the community. It's kind of a, a hot item now where people come in and get screened for um, lung cancer. We have some pretty um, um, restrictive guidelines around our lung screen program that were developed by um, our medical oncologists and our surgeons. And we look for um, patients that have a certain age range and a certain history of behaviors, smoking, etc. And if they qualify, they can come in and um, have a lung screen. And the intent of the lung screen is to really catch um, lung cancer in its early stages. So we've done 450 lung screens and we've had 11 findings. Now, they may not sound like much, um, but these were stage ones that if they would not have come through this process, they probably wouldn't know that they had lung cancer until it progressed further down the road. So these are candidates that are open for surgery and have a much higher success rate than patients who may um, have not known and then waited and then had their um, cancer become more severe. So it's, it's very beneficial from that perspective. For our breast cancer program, we're working on a um, initiative to increase this. So right now we're averaging eight days um, to detection and pathology. So this is from your screening mammogram to a definitive um, cancer um, diagnosis. It's eight days. I don't think that's the right number. That's where we are now. Um, I want to see this drop closer to three days. Um, that's some of the work that we did in Phoenix and Houston. This is really about aligning our physicians, our radiologists, our pathologists all together. Um, and this is where we're investing a lot of time and energy, and I think we'll be able to make this happen because there's nothing worse than having to wait while you're in this kind of limbo phase if there is a potential finding. I mean, the stress that that causes is, is out of this world. So ideally, this is something that we're really focusing on. And then colorectal. Um, we have um, um, experts in eight different subspecialty areas, and then we also have our um, cancer prevention program. We have a colorectal screening initiative led by uh, two physicians and a couple of administrators that are really just out there promoting the need for colorectal screenings and coming in. And again, some of the lung cancer, if there is something, let's take care of it early, let's take care of it quick, and get some better outcomes from that perspective. This is one of our um, um, campaigns that you'll see. This is um, our ribbon campaign and the repurposing of ribbons. You may have seen it um, on TV. We started running some of this in um, late September. There'll be some new cycles of um, advertising coming forward, but we're really looking at repurposing these ribbons that you see everywhere for cancer. And I think they're very um, impactful um, campaigns and marketing, and they've been um, um, very successful for us and really just kind of shows our relationship as we uh, go forward within the Anderson in Houston. Um, these are a couple of uh, stories. Um, what I'll do is really just really speak to these. We had a patient um, come in uh, with the cancer diagnosis and this is a little bit um, uh, about her uh, right here. And when she came in, um, obviously she was very worried and concerned and she was given a definitive um, um, diagnosis. And then when she called to talk to myself and um, um, one of our um, marketing reps once we set up the, this meeting, she didn't really know what to do. And she'd seen one of our ads that Ohio Health had affiliated with um, MD Anderson, albeit the relationship was still forming. It was very early on. Um, 
she was still a little bit uncertain about what to do. So she decided um, she was going to get her treatment plan <laughs> here in Ohio Health um, by her medical oncologist and surgery uh, surgical oncologist, and then head down to Houston for some validation. On her own, she and her family were like, we're going to make sure that this is the right plan for us. Um, so they did. They uh, went down to Houston, set up the appointments, and lo and behold, the treatment plan that was presented to her there was identical to the plan that was prescribed for her here at Ohio Health. So the validation was there. It was a great story. They flew back, and she's doing great right now. And it's the ability to have, again, that validation that we are um, providing the best possible care for our patients. It was just a, a, a great example of that. Another one is the peer-to-peer the -peer consult that I mentioned. We've already had um, 22 um, patients consulted through MD Anderson in Houston. And these are just physicians. There's a mechanism we have in place where um, they send literally an email down to Houston. It gets distributed to the right physician in Houston in their right disease site. And then there's a reply. There's a quick meeting, a phone call. Um, there's some sharing of uh, medical information if need be. And then there's a conversation. And then there, that's where that validation happens. And um, it's just a great extra resource for our patients to have with, uh, that mechanism for our physicians to have a casual conversation and validate their treatment plans. Um, we're also doing, um, starting next month, our multidisciplinary um, planning conferences with Houston, which once a week on Tuesday mornings from 8 to 10, our physicians will present cases in a tumor board type fashion with Houston on the other end, um, video conferenced in. But it's not only Houston um, in our program here, it's all certified hospitals through MD Anderson across the United States. So there's only a limited amount of cases that can be presented. Everyone is sharing time on this tumor board, but it's a great way to get not only MD Anderson Houston expertise to the table, but expertise from oncologists across the um, U.S. And it's actually, we haven't done it yet. Like I said, it starts next month for us. We're working through some of our technical connectivity pieces. Um, but word on the street is that it's an amazing um, session that happens. I spoke to uh, my counterpart at Community Health in Indiana. They're certified also through MD Anderson and their physicians love it and they get great results for their patients. So again, just another mechanism to validate the care that we're providing um, um, to the folks here in Columbus. So that's my presentation. I went a little bit quick. I, I gave one somewhere this morning. I'm kind of amped up on coffee here, so. <laughs> <laughs> Questions, let me know.